In today's world, many things are easily identifiable as art. Everything from painting to pottery can be classified as an artistic process and judged on those merits. But what about the process of surgery? Many would argue that it falls purely within the realms of science and medicine, but in reality the origins of the surgical process are not dissimilar from carving and sculpting. Ancient peoples did not have such a need to separate artistic and medical practices. What saved your life at the time could have shamanistic, artistic, and medicinal purposes rolled into one. What was this lofty and refined practice that bridged the gap between medicine and art? It was as simple as having a hole bored into your skull. While this may sound barbaric today, trepanation is the oldest known surgical procedure. Dating back an estimated 40,000 years, there is evidence that it was practiced by the early Cro-Magnon people throughout the Neolithic Age and its use continues in some parts of the world to this very day. Trepanation is a planned operation to intentionally open a hole in the skull of a live subject. This can be done several ways, such as through incision, abrasion, drilling, or some combination of these. Once the piece or pieces of the skull have been cut free, they are carefully removed, exposing the brain. Often the skull is sewn back in place over the open hole and left to heal naturally from there. But why would anyone willingly subject themselves to such a gruesome procedure? The fact is trepanation is actually a relatively successful form of cranial surgery. It was heavily practiced in the pre-Columbian cultures of Mesoamerica, Central America, and the Andes. In particular, the largest studied samples of trepanation come from the peoples of Peru. The procedure was done to relieve pressure on the brain resulting from blunt force trauma and concussions. If a person's brain is allowed to swell and press against the skull after an injury, it can result in permanent damage or death. When stone weaponry and clubs were the order of the day, such injuries could be fairly common. At a time without precision tools, sterile operating rooms, or medical degrees, the ancient peoples of the Andes found a way to save lives using nothing but the stone tools already at their disposal. What's more amazing still is how successful the process appeared to be. Over time, the holes would begin to fill in with new bone, by investigating the skulls of the time, we can see the rings where new bone was growing in. Like counting the rings of a tree, these markers indicate how long the person survived after the procedure. As long as the protective membrane surrounding the brain was not pierced, risk of serious infection was minimal. Trepanation practitioners took great care not to cut deeper than the bone to prevent this. Most estimates place the survival rate from Andean skulls at about 70%, although it could be higher. However, trepanation was not a purely medical practice. It was also used to cure ailments that were not life-threatening. After their arrival in the New World, the Spanish also reported that trepanation was used to cure chronic headaches and mental disorders. There was a shamanistic and ritualistic purpose to trepanation that was used to help ensure the survival of the Andean people. Even today, people who undergo trepanation as a form of alternative medicine report relief from things such as anxiety and depression. Many claim it leads to a richer emotional life, feelings of freedom, and even a better ability to recount your dreams. The form of the skull was an important feature in Andean life. In addition to trepanation, many cultures throughout the region practiced cranial reformation to change the shape and size of the skull. The exact purpose of this remains unknown, but infants' heads were often bound or reshaped with blocks to create an elongated or flatter head shape as they matured into adults. Scholars have theorized this was to show cultural fidelity among people from different regions. In retrospect, the steady hands of a medicine man as they carefully cut away sections of the skull are not too different from those of an artist working on a painting or sculpture. The skull held a special place among the cultures of the ancient Andes, whether it was being reshaped, repaired, or collected as a trophy head. These procedures were done with great care and expertise, bringing a truly artistic perspective to an ancient form of surgery.